Hey everyone, this is Mike Tholfson from the Microsoft Education Team. And today I'm gonna to be talking about Microsoft Teams for EDU, and I'm gonna be showing the basics of how to set up a class in Teams, use assignments, use class notebooks, and get going. Before we get going with the actual walkthrough and the demo, just at a high level right now, and in Australia, it might be a little different than the rest of the world, but in general, remote learning is going at full scale and hybrid learning and everything in between. And so we really want to make sure that we can help schools meet their needs, whether it's online infrastructure in terms of the learning and the platform, the communication, collaboration tools like we'll be talking about today with Teams, and also inclusive and accessible education. And there's many, many accessibility features built right into Teams. And then user readiness, training, professional development, all of those things are really critical when educators are moving to this new online world or hybrid world. So Microsoft Teams, if you're not already familiar with it, that's our real digital hub for communication, collaboration, classes, staff, PLCs, clubs, and you can use it for all different ways you're interacting online. And it brings everything together in one place, which is really powerful. You don't have to go to 50 different tools. Everything's in one tool. Just some stats on Teams for Education. It's been exploding with popularity, especially during the pandemic when a lot of things have moved online. And you can see some of the numbers here. In terms of remote learning, obviously the meetings component and those online meetings for classes or office hours or communication is really critical. You can use it for things like announcements and assignments. You can use it for chatting and conversation and all sorts of apps can be used in Teams. Things like Wakelet and Buncee and Nearpod. All sorts of really cool apps are integrated right into Teams and it's free. This is a great tweet that we saw early on in the pandemic and I think it really speaks to remote learning and how educators reinvented teaching in just one week in many cases. And so we know it has been really challenging and stressful and hopefully these tools can make your lives a little bit easier as you're working with students as well as their parents in many cases. So Teams, delivering live lessons, you can record your lessons, you can share content. Teams is also integrated with the meetings components into many different learning management systems or VLEs. And this is the one that we're gonna talk the most about today, these collaborative classrooms and how to set those up, how to use them. We love the ability to empower student voice and being able to have conversations and all sorts of content, video. And assignments, we'll also be talking and showing those a bit today in terms of how you create them, how you distribute assignments, uh, how to grade, and then even integrate class notebooks with your assignments. And, I'm on the class notebook team and I'm a big fan of class notebooks, obviously a big OneNote fan. And then lastly, accessibility and inclusion is a really big part. So we have things like the immersive reader built into Teams, which I'll show. You can do translation, live captions, accessibility checker in our office apps that are inside of Teams, even math. And then apps for education, like I mentioned earlier, there's all sorts of different apps that you can use with Teams, some great ed tech apps. Flipgrid is in there, Pear Deck, Nearpod, ThingLink. And before we get going here into the demo, also just another last tweet that I think is, is a nice one. Uh, in the 16 years of teaching, I've never been able to evaluate and return student work submissions as fast as I can now with Teams. So hopefully that will you know, give you time back. A lot of educators around the world are definitely feeling stress and pressure right now with the pandemic. And so if we can give you a little time back, a little more relaxation, that's good as far as we're concerned. Also, while I'll be doing demos today, if you're looking for more step-by-step -step tips and tricks that you wanna be able to watch a few times or share with other educators, I've created a YouTube channel during the pandemic and it's all about quick tips. I've got probably Oh, 50 to 75 Microsoft Teams quick tips alone, little short videos, how to do different things in Teams, how to use assignments and meeting features. I also have OneNote quick tips, inclusive and accessible quick tips, Word, Forms, PowerPoint. All of that is on my YouTube channel. So definitely check that out, subscribe to it because I'm always putting new updates and tips out so you can keep up to date with the latest. It's also really good so you don't have to record the videos for other people. We know that educators spend a lot of time recording videos that they share with others for PD. 
So you can just use these, so save yourself some time that way as well. Okay, let's switch over to Teams and we'll start walking through the basics of how to create a class and get going. Okay, I'm here in Teams and this is the main page you'll see when you sign in as an educator. I've got a bunch of teams created already. I've got a class teams, I've got some PLCs, I have a staff team, and I'm gonna show the basics of how to create a new class team. So let's go to the upper right here and we'll click join or create team. And then we'll click create team. And you'll see there's four choices, class, PLC, staff, or other. We're gonna choose class, which is a team for my class to collaborate in. We'll give this a name and I will call this science and I'll hit next. Now this is where you enter your students. If you're using school data sync, which is also free, it will actually read from the rosters and this can automatically all be created automatically for you. So you don't have to manually add students or remove students for this demo here. I'm just going to really quickly paste in a set of students. So we get going. Okay, I'm in my blank team now and it's just got set up. So there's nothing in here and across the top. These are called tabs. So there's posts where we'll have conversations and chats. There's files where I can upload class materials. There's a class notebook and we'll get to that in just a little bit later. The assignments and then grades. And all these tabs, consider this the we space. This means the class can see all of these. On the left hand side over here, we call this the me space of teams. And so that's where I can do things like chat, see all my teams, see all the assignments. You know, I've got a calendar here if I want uh, calls and files. But for today in this team in the class team, we're really going to focus on inside the class here. Now, the first thing I like to do is right here. You can see the blank. It's like S with gray. I actually like to give it a nice little icon in the background. So for my science class here, I'm going to choose, let's say a nice microscope and I will click update and you can even set the, the level here. So is it a primary school, secondary school, post-secondary and what subject? And there's actually a bunch of different subjects. So I'm going to do science and we'll choose a microscope and I'll click update. There, that looks a little bit better. The other thing is, is you can go and manage all the settings in your class team. If I go to manage team here, what you're going to see is here's the teacher. I'm Kara Coleman in this case. Here's all the students in the class. If I want to mute all the students, I could do this or if I just want to mute a couple. So if they're being noisy in the posts in the chat, I can go mute them. Uh, things like channels, all of your settings are in here. We'll get to channels a little bit later. Settings for the class. This is helpful. So team themes, uh, things like at mentioning and who can at mention. If you want to generate a join code, even generate a nice little join code here. So if people want to join the class with a join code, you can do that. And there's some fun stuff around emojis and gifts and stickers and themes. So all the settings for your class are right under this dot, dot, dot manage team. And what we'll do first here is you can upload class materials. Maybe there's some materials you want to have in your class. You can go here and say upload class materials. And class materials, if I go into here, this is a read only folder. That means maybe I have some reference materials and I'm going to upload a, a geography document. Anything in class materials is read only. You say read only files go here. Students can read these files, but only the teacher can edit. So there I've uploaded a geography document. So that's kind of like my read only library. I can also put other files in here that are, are read write. So if the class wants to be able to read or write them. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is set up the structure in my class. I've got the general tab here, the general channel, and I'm going to go and create a couple more channels. Uh, maybe I want to have some channels for some project teams to work together on. So I go with the dot, 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 and I choose add channel and I'll have this, uh, maybe the project team blue. Maybe there's going to be a blue project team. I can choose to automatically show the channel, click add. There's project team blue. Now they have a channel. Think about the channel is a separate place where people can collaborate in posts. There's files. There's even notes in this place. And so this allows different people to work off in different channels. So again, it's really good for project based work. Maybe I want to add another channel here and I'll have the next one called project team red and I'll say automatically show it. So everyone sees it. And then project team green. So this works really nice if you're going to have some groups of collaboration working together. We'll go back to the general channel. So I've got my uh, structure going here 
And now I'm gonna to go to assignments. This is probably the core part of a class team. And I'm gonna make an assignment that I'm gonna to distribute to my class. So for assignments, it's blank here. I'm gonna click get started. And at the bottom, you're gonna see this create button. If I click create, I can choose assignment. If I had some older assignments, I'd been using Teams already, I could actually pull from existing assignments, but we'll create a brand new one in this case. And this is the assignment form to fill out. So I'm gonna say, this is an Amazon rainforest assignment, instructions, please write a paper on the Amazon rainforest. Now you can also add resources. So if I wanted to say, you know, I want them to, you know, check out a PowerPoint or look at a video or do such and such. Maybe I'm like, you know, maybe there's a video for the Amazon rainforest. I want them to watch. I'm not going to do that now. You can create a new file so you can actually attach reference materials if you want them to do something else. I'm not going to do that right here, but you could add resources for the instructions like watch the video, write the paper. How many points is this worth? So we'll say that, Hey, this is worth 10 points. You can also add a rubric. Rubrics are really powerful to provide transparency and grading feedback. So in this case, I actually can create new rubrics or upload ones. There's actually some rubrics already existing. I'm gonna choose one here. I've already created some, but you can see what a filled out rubric looks like. Report rubric, description. Now you can see here uh, the different grading criteria. Content, you know, this is worth four points, three points, two points, or one point in each of these and it actually can help distribute the percentages of how those points work out. So this is really powerful to provide transparency in the feedback that you're giving is using rubrics. So I've attached a rubric here as well. Now this is gonna be going to my science class. You can see I've got other classes here. I could actually distribute this to multiple classes at the same time, so multi-class assignment distribution. I'm just gonna leave it as science, but if I wanted to do others, I could do that easily. And it, by default, it goes to all students, but if I only wanted to distribute this individualization, maybe I just wanted to say two students, you know, Omar and Henry, but I'm gonna clear that, it'll go to all students. I'm gonna set the due date for Monday, the, oh, actually we'll go the, to, oh, actually February 1st, and it's gonna be at midnight. And settings, this is really nice right here, these settings for assignments. Maybe you don't want it to post to the general channel. Some people say, you know, I don't want the assignment notifications to go to the general channel all the time. Maybe I want it to go to a different unit or a different place. So that lets you put the notification for that assignment in a different area. Okay, I've got all of my assignment filled out and I'm gonna click assign. So what that does is it distributes it to all the students in my class. Uh, they will get notifications this will give a notification here in just a minute for me, and it'll also post a notification to the general channel, and that'll happen in just a moment. This is a nice little tip here. There's assignment settings up at the dot, dot, dot here. I click this, and I can do things like uh, always set a default due date for my assignments. Any new student that joins the class will receive assignments. Yep, I'm gonna turn that one on. Uh, turn in celebrations, I'm gonna leave that one on and the notifications you can set where those go to. So there's some nice assignment settings in the dot, dot, dot here that you can choose to use if you wanna change how your assignments go up. So I've made my assignment. While we're waiting for that, I'm gonna to go to the class notebook and let's set that up. So I'm a big fan of OneNote in the class notebook. If you've never used OneNote in class notebook before, uh, definitely I mentioned those quick tip videos. I've got some great videos to walk you through all the details, but Class notebook is really powerful. It's like a big binder for the class. And I'm gonna set mine up. So you can choose blank notebook or from existing notebook content. If I choose from existing notebook content, if you're an existing OneNote user, you can pull in content that you've already used before. I'm not gonna do that now. We'll keep it blank. But just as a note, this is really helpful. If you're already using OneNote, you can import existing content into Teams. We'll choose blank notebook. This explains how the class notebook gets set up. There's a collaboration space where everyone can work together. Things like, you know, project team, blue, green, and red. There's a content library where things are read-only for students, but the teacher can edit. There's a teacher-only area. Oh, and note, there's a little assignment. It just pinged me, so I got pinged that that assignment was distributed. Okay, back to class notebooks. And then a teacher-only section. This means it's only a place where the teacher can have all their materials privately inside their binder. So lesson plans and planning. And then student notebooks. This allows the student 
in the class to have their own little private space. So every student in the class gets a private space that they can put their materials into. It's kind of like a hub and a spoke model. So the teacher is the hub and the student is the spoke. So we'll click next. Now ask what should go inside of each student's little private space. So if I'm the teacher, I'm setting up a little private notebook for every kid in the class. We have some defaults. So imagine every student gets a handout section, a class notes section, a homework and quizzes. Maybe I'm gonna add A, every student has a labs section in this science class. So this is the template that every student gets and I'll click create to set up this class notebook. And this will take just a moment. And so as this is going, we'll go see what that assignment looks like. And then I'll show the class notebook after it's set up. So if I go back into general, you're gonna see, hey, here's the Amazon rainforest assignment. And that posts to the channel that everyone in class can see. So if I click view assignment as the teacher, I'm just gonna open that assignment back up and you can see here, now I can see here's the seven students. I can see did anyone turn in yet or not and have I left feedback for everyone or not. And so this is the teacher view of that specific assignment. What I'm gonna do is switch over to a student and show what they see when they receive the assignment. So we'll flip over to the student view of that science class. Okay, now I'm signed in as Alex the student. And this is my home screen and here's that science class. And it looks like there's one notification for me, Alex, in science. So let's drill into science. And also note I'm in the browser. So I can be on any device. In this case, I'm in the browser, but it works on phones, iPads, everything else. So here is this assignment that is in this post channel. Also as Alex, if I go over here to assignments at the top, I can see the assignments for this one class. Okay, here is my assignment, Amazon Rainforest, due February 1st at 11.59. I'll open that up as Alex. And here's my assignment. Now one note, because we we're talking about accessibility earlier, what's really cool is the immersive reader is built right in in the upper right here. You'll see this immersive reader button right next to the turn in button. When I click immersive reader, watch what happens. All of the instructions for that assignment are now in the immersive reader. So I can do things like read out loud. Amazon rainforest assignment. And I can click on different words. There's a picture dictionary. Paper, paper. I can translate. So if I go to the reading preferences, I can translate this into many different languages. We have over 70 languages, so I'll translate to Spanish in this case, translate the document, read out loud. Asignación de bosque de Amazon Rain. And I can even do things like break words into syllables, highlight the nouns, the verbs, and the adjectives. And I can change the background color. So maybe I have a challenge reading with white or black. I can change different backgrounds. I can even do line focus. So focusing my eye just on one line at a time could be good for ADHD or dyslexia, even cerebral palsy. I'll flip back to the original language here and I'll close the immersive reader. So the immersive reader is fully built into assignments to help with instructions. But here's the assignment. Here's the rubric. So Alex, the student, can open up the rubric and understand, okay, here's how this will be graded. And in the instructions, I add my work when I'm done. So let's pretend I've written my Amazon rainforest. I'm going to add my work here. And I'm going to upload a new file from this device. And there's the Amazon rainforest. It's just going to upload and I'll click done. So I've done my assignment. I've attached my Amazon document and I'm going to click turn in and now watch the turn in celebration. This is super cool. Look at that. Every time they're different too. So kind of fun turn in celebrations. So I've attached my rainforest document and I've submitted my assignment. Let's flip back to Kara, the educator and see what happens there. Now Kara is going to open up the Amazon rainforest assignment here. And now you'll see one student has turned in, that was Alex. So Alex turned in his assignment, and I'm gonna open this up and use the grader. So this is what we call the speed grader. It's pulled up the Amazon Rainforest document, and the, the rubric is right here. So if I can even open up the rubric and take a look at what's happening. Okay, this is the rubric. Maybe I'm gonna select a couple things here. Um, really fast rubric, and I hit done. And it actually calculates 6.88 points out of 10. So the rubric calculates everything that's going on. And I can go in here and I can say, you know, hey, 
Great job, Alex. And I hit return. So that returns that paper to I'm returning it a little bit early. Now it was due on the February 1st, but we'll just return the paper now. And if I want to go to the next student, I click the next arrow here. Now, the other students haven't turned work in, but this is the speed grader. So I can go back and forth between students. I can even drop this down and choose the student that I want. So that's how speed grader works. And as you can see, it was super easy, especially with that rubric attached to be able to do things. You know, if I even want to add a comment in Word, I could go here, I could go to review and I could add a comment here. So, you know, um, there's the new comment. I could say, you know, what about the source or, you know, whatever I might be asking. So you can actually add comments just like you would in Word. All those things work right here in the speed grader. So I'm going to close this. Now I've given out a grade to Alex. What's really nice about Teams is Assignments also has a grade book. So if I go to grades here, you're going to see, and it's very simple, but I've only got one assignment. You can see Alex has 6.88. And if I go to the dot, 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 I can actually open that up and see where it's at. And this is a very simple grade book. We're going to be adding more capabilities, but don't expect this to be like an actual full scale grade book with an SIS. The idea is this is a lightweight grade book, but we're working on being able to push these types of marks directly into a student information system. You can also export to Excel on the upper right here. So that's a real quick tour of how assignments and grades work. Now let's go back to our class notebook. We were setting that up earlier. So it should be done now. I'll go to my class notebook here and you're going to see OneNote embedded right inside of Teams here. So here's my class notebook. I always like to say go full screen. So this little button here lets you go full screen so you get more real estate. But I'm going to open this up and you'll see this collaboration space that we talked about. This is where the, everyone can work together and edit. This is the content library. This is the teacher only area. So that's where I have my own private space where no one else can yeah, get access to, but I can do my planning in here. And then all the students in the class. So Alex, Eldon, Ella, Henry. And remember those little templates that we set up. Here it is, class notes, quizzes, labs, homework, and handouts. So all of those sections that I put in the beginning as a template, every student has those. Now. I, as the teacher, can see all of the students, all seven students. I get to see all of them at once. But Alex can't see Eldon and, you know, Ella can't see James. It's that hub and spoke model. But Alex has access to the collaboration space and everyone else has access to the content library. I'll switch to Alex now to show what does he see when he has the class notebook open inside of Teams. So let's go to Alex. So Alex will go here to the class notebook as a student and we'll maximize this so we can get all the screen real estate. And when you open this up, what you're going to see is Alex just sees himself. So here's my stuff as Alex and I can see the content library in the collaboration space. Note that I cannot see the teacher only section, I can only see my own stuff. And so OneNote is really powerful, uh, not, not only inside of Teams, but I can open this up inside of OneNote. So if I open the desktop app here, this will pull the whole class notebook into OneNote desktop or OneNote for Windows 10. And things like digital inking and writing and typing, you know, so I can do digital ink in here. And, you know, I'm, I don't have a, a, a pen handy, but, you know, I can do all sorts of stuff with ink in OneNote. You can use the immersive reader in OneNote and I go to the home menu in OneNote, I click on dictate. This is an inclusive and accessible feature. Now I am dictating inside of OneNote, period. This is really helpful for students that might have dysgraphia or other mobility impairments, period. So you can see how powerful that is. Now, what's really interesting is the immersive reader is also in OneNote. So if I go here to the view menu and click immersive reader, you're going to see the same immersive reader that we saw last time. And I can read this out loud. Now I am dictating inside of OneNote. This is really helpful for students that might have dysgraphia or other mobility impairment. So all of that immersive reader that I showed before, background colors, translate, everything like that, uh, that is all available inside of OneNote. So this is the class notebook. I'm not going to do a full demo of class notebook because we don't have time today, but hopefully that gives you a sense. We're going to switch back to Kara the educator and I'm going to go back into the posts. 
Now post, the, the main channel here, post is great for collaboration and communication. One thing it is, is it's a place where you can post updates to things. So I'm gonna click new conversation and I will click the little A to give myself a little more space. So I can say like, hey class, let's get ready for the big quiz. And you can uh, give it a subject, it's always good. What's nice here, if I make an announcement, I drop this down and choose announcement and I'm gonna click background here and upload an image. And well, I'll click background and choose an illustration. And there's lots of fun illustrations. Maybe there's a dragon. There's a whole bunch of different options here. Um, and so I like the dragon personally. So I'm gonna click done. And then there's a get ready for quiz. What's also nice is you can do fun things like animated GIFs. So I can maybe make a dragon GIF here put that in there and you can kind of keep it fun and engaging inside of your class. The other nice thing that you can do right here inside of the post is you can create forms. So I'm going to click new conversation and I'll go to the dot 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 menu and I'll type forms and you'll see this forms here. So I can make a really quick poll. So forms technology, the question is, yeah, uh, you know, what is your favorite color? What is your favorite color? Question mark. And the options will be blue and red and green. And I'm gonna say keep results or responses anonymous and share results after voting. So I click save here and it's actually going to now push this out so everyone will get a place to vote right here inside a post. So what's your favorite color? You get to go in here, submit your vote. I'm gonna vote blue and it'll give me a tally right away. And now there's one person voted blue. We'll switch over to Alex and we'll see what it looks like for him. So Alex goes to the general channel for posts and hey, there is a little form here. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is red. And so now you're gonna see there's one vote for blue and one vote for red. So forms and posts are a really nice way to integrate. And we'll go back to Kara the educator here. Now adding more tabs is really useful inside of Teams. If I click the plus tab here, add a tab, I can add other apps in here. So for example, you can see a lot of Microsoft apps. I'm not gonna go through all those, but there's also some really cool apps down here. So a really fun one is Kahoot. Kahoot is very popular in classes. I'm gonna click add. You can add a Kahoot tab right in here and sign into your account. I'm not gonna sign into my whole account here because um, that'll just take more time. But you can sign into your Kahoot account and then you can post Kahoots right here inside of Teams and it pins it up there. You could also, there's other apps like if you're a Nearpod fan, there's Nearpod in there. We have Pear Deck, uh, all sorts of apps. You know, even Flipgrid is in here. And I'm gonna add one though for Stream. Microsoft Stream is our video solution. And Stream is a great way to pin videos. So maybe you record videos for your class or you do flipped learning. And I'm gonna go here and paste in a channel so I have a channel already on space and astronomy and this is stream. So it's actually a set of videos. I'm going to click save and this will pin the space and astronomy stream channel right here, which is really nice. So here's eight different videos. So everyone in the class now can just go to this tab for space and astronomy and click burning surface of the sun and I can watch this video. So, really nice having that stream channel. You could also just post a specific video. And maybe if you don't use stream, maybe you wanna use YouTube, I can click plus and go up here and there's just websites. So website lets you post a video kinda of to anything. So I'll post a, a video here for YouTube. There we go. And there's that YouTube video that I posted right in here about space exploration. So that's a really easy way to be able to post tabs right into Teams and make your classroom more engaging and interactive. So that's a quick tour of class Teams. I'm gonna switch back to the PowerPoint now and just show a few things that are gonna be coming soon and other interesting updates that we've had for Teams recently. One thing that's been incredibly popular have been breakout rooms. We recently launched breakout rooms just a few weeks ago. This allows the educator to break a meeting up into different breakout rooms and assign students to each room. 
Students using those rooms can do things like present, they can use whiteboards, all the inclusive features are in there. So Breakout Rooms has recently rolled out. I've got a really nice demo step-by-step -step tutorial video on my YouTube channel that I mentioned earlier. Encourage you to go there and check out the Breakout Rooms video to see exactly how it works. We also rolled out the Spotlight feature. This allows an educator to highlight a specific person in the class so they can uh, focus on that person. So in, here's an example where I've got my students, I'm gonna highlight Chelsea and click the dot, dot, dot menu and choose Spotlight and she will be in front of the class. You can do that to a student. The teacher can do that for his or herself as well. So spotlighting yourself so the students just focus on you or a specific student. You can see there's a spotlight icon that's highlighted here. And if I wanna click stop spotlight, I'll go up to the top and click stop, right? That. This is another one, not letting attendees unmute. So a lot of times there'll be a lot of attendees who, uh, students who are gonna be unmuting. If you choose don't allow attendees to unmute, that means you will disable their microphone so they cannot unmute and start distracting. So in this case, I've turned off the mute and nobody else can unmute. You can see their microphones on the right-hand side are fully disabled. And so then if I wanna share my stuff, I can share it and no one will be unmuting themselves and distracting. Focus mode is another one. This allows you to turn off the videos along the bottom. This just rolled out as well. So if I hit the dot, dot, dot and choose focus, all the videos on the bottom will disappear. This is an inclusive and accessible feature. This can remove distractions and let you focus a bit more on the content. Whiteboard and Teams meetings, this one has already rolled out. Again, this is one where I want to allow people to collaborate and share. So here's an example of using a whiteboard in a Teams meeting. We're using sticky notes, we're using pens, we're dragging them around. Also, the teacher can lock the whiteboard. So if I go to the upper right, I can go and say, turn that whiteboard to be fully read only, which makes it so if I'm doing work on the whiteboard, no one else can distract me. There are some great student safety links. So in terms of how do I set up meetings? How does my IT administrator make it so only teachers can present and students or attendees? How do I make sure that students can't mute me? All of that information is in one link. It's our student safety link. That link's right on the screen. That's a great one to share with IT admins and other educators in your school. And then coming soon, dynamic views. This is gonna be rolling out in March. Really powerful, allows you to overlay a person like a green screen over the content. Also allows you to pin videos like in the upper right here, pinning sign language, American or Australian sign language instructors or signers, pinning certain videos in certain places, overlaying yourself on videos. All of that is coming to something called dynamic views. That's gonna be in March. And then another one coming soon is the SharePoint homepage app. This allows you, maybe you have a school homepage there's this Contoso little link here, and you can, you know, this is a custom name, but you can customize this link to be, you know, your school name and pin that to be the school homepage. Really helpful to have your homepage baked right into Teams. That's also coming out in February or March. And then meeting recap. This is rolling out probably in the next week or two. After a meeting is done, all of the information like the recording, the transcript, the notes, the PowerPoint deck, all of that will be under details. So you can have all the information from your meeting all in one place. Really, really great for organizing and not just for classes. Think about staff meetings, think about PLC meetings, really great for that. And we're gonna be wrapping up here in terms of resources. There is these short and sweet interactive guides all about inclusive classroom. We didn't talk about that as much today, but a lot of these things are baked into teams. So inclusive reading, inclusive writing, inclusive math and communication, assistive technology, accessibility and inclusion, really critical during remote learning and during this pandemic. So I encourage you to check these out and share them. They're free, they're on the web. You can give them to anyone, parents, teachers, school leaders. And then a reminder, if you want more detail, if I went through things way too fast for you today, don't worry. Everything and way more is on these uh, my YouTube channel in these quick tips. And they're organized by playlists. You know, there's Teams for Beginners. There's Teams Meetings Quick Tips. There's Teams for EDU Quick Tips. There's OneNote Quick Tips, PowerPoint, Forms, Word, Inclusion, Accessibility, everything. Check this out. And if you need more assistance, 
this is good to just practice and see how all these things work. And there's a couple of more resources, our team's product pages and on the Mac, the Microsoft Educator Center. There's a wakelet that has a bunch of teams resources together so you can check those out as well. And if you want a copy of this presentation, here's the link, also the QR code. And if you wanna reach out to me in email, feel free, my email is below. I love to get email. Also on Twitter, I'm very active as a tweeter and tweet me out, ask me questions. I put lots of updates out on Twitter as well. So follow along there and I'm happy to answer questions or hear your feedback. And thank you very much. Have a great rest of your edu days.